see myself a very uh, technically skilled guitar player, but I, I like the rhythmic and uh, dynamic aspects of it, um, especially like playing acoustic or something where I have complete control over the dynamic, whether it comes down really small or, or gets loud. I think when we, when Thrice was first starting, um, Everything was just kind of always in all the time, and um, <laughs> later on, kind of learning like, oh, there's this thing called dynamics. But things can get loud and soft, and um, I don't even have to play all the time. And so, I didn't care about tone for a long time, and then I got really into it, and I've been half neurotic about, you know, what gear I'm using since then. Finding gear that like lets you play expressively is really important for me. That was finding like okay, I don't need the most high output pickup. I don't need a super powerful amp. I need an amp that like lets me back off and then lets me dig in. And the joy of, of being able to play dynamically and, and have it translate through your gear is, is uh, great. trying to find what's the, the thing that's going to feel great in this spot, even if it's super simple or, or, or super quiet. Yeah, I think learning to play with feel is, is I mean, if you're in a rock band, it's more important than, than playing uh, with technical proficiency. I mean, it's great if you can do both, but Guitar specifically as an instrument, I think, if you're playing rock and roll music, like the, it's just the way the guitar wants to be played is dynamically, and, and you're physically, viscerally transferring energy into these strings, you know, and uh, that's really at the core of, uh, I think, what we love about rock music. I feel like I've been playing Ernie Balls for as long as I've been playing guitar. I would go into the local music shop by where I grew up and pick out whatever Eagle <laughs> pack was was there. And so I think I probably started on you know the regular Slinkies. I remember at some point kind of trying out some different company sets and, and kind of always having a problem here or there. And I ended up being like, man, I'm going back to Ernie Balls <laughs> and uh, never looked back. If it's because for so long I didn't like fancy myself like a guitar player. I'm a singer and I play guitar. And more and more I've come to be like, I like I really like playing guitar. I think I'm pretty good at like what I do at least with it. And so I, I didn't have like these shredders that I like looked up to or tried to you know play the riff that was just never me. But I, I mean I think I've come to appreciate certain people um, over time. I really like Peter Green's guitar playing early Fleetwood Mac before it was like the Fleetwood Mac. Everyone knows. I grew up with a ton of Beatles, so I love uh, George Harrison's playing, and uh, it's just kind of always like the right thing. He just, yep, that's that's what you should play there. That was perfect. I think the funny thing about the Beatles too is you kind of, you know these songs well, and you're like, yeah, it's you know, it's a fairly simple song. It's really catchy. And then you sit down and try to play it, and you're like, what, what chords are these? Like, it just, they're much more subtle. and. Uh, nuance than, than you would imagine. The players that are, that are exciting to me are, are 
players that are, are, are doing things that are kind of outside the box as far as, like, it's not the guy who has, like, the super technical chops, but the guy who is playing with, with a certain intensity or where it's a bit more out of control. It's more about the feeling of it than the technicality. I think it's it's helpful for theory um, in being able to see how different chords work together. We, I feel like as a band, none of us have any kind of like real musical training, but we kind of learned theory as we went and didn't have the right names for it. And we'd just be like, oh, when these things happen together, it does this thing. And then if you do this, you can go to a different key. And, and, and slowly we'd learn like, oh yeah, that's called this thing. But um, I think there's something uh, very cool about discovering that stuff and uh, having a very visceral grasp of it um, as opposed to just a kind of a, a mental one. I mean, I think growing up playing punk rock music is has always influenced the way that we are doing whatever we're doing and, and will continue to, even if it doesn't sound anything like uh, you know, what we were playing 15 years ago. I think there's an element of the urgency and I think raw qualities that we still really want to keep in our music. Thank <laughs> you.